Hello and welcome everyone back to Not Fighting. I am Tyler Bishop. Well, you guys, you guys get it. Anyways, welcome back to the podcast. I'm Jenna. I'm I'm Tyler. <laughs> the bishops. I got a busted lip right now, so I feel like I was like, um, if you see me talking weird or doing something weird with my mouth, it hurts a lot. How'd you bust your lip? Not training jujitsu. <laughs> I, but isn't that the thing like you feel like you get kind of used to having like I, I feel like I get used to having like marks on my face or like you know lips busted if not on the outside always on the inside I feel like mm-hmm. the inside of my mo- mm-hmm. mouth is never completely healed yeah and I never wear a m- mouth guard I don't either and ah, boy that I could should. Almost, I, I should that could almost be its own podcast at some point because I I feel like I, I know I should yeah and I know I should because I have multiple friends that have like had teeth knocked out or something terrible like that. Back concussions. Does, can't some of that say help with like concussions? Yeah, because yeah, it keeps your jaw like aligned and stuff. Although I've heard that you need like just the right, I don't know. Isn't everybody always trying to tell you you got to have just the right kind or whatever? I don't know. Sounds like a sales thing. <laughs> Probably. It's, <laughs> it's big dentistry that's like trying to get you or big concussions. I mean... Dentistry is not cheap. Is there anybody for that kind of cosmetic? Is there anybody stuff. making lots of money off people not getting concussions? I mean, mouth guards are like five ninety nine. Not getting concussions, probably not. I mean, There's a lot of people making money off of people getting concussions. Yeah, I mean the NFL. <laughs> 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 Anyways, <laughs> but it is kind of weird that you you do have this thing where it's like I do know people that have had their teeth knocked out in jujitsu, and I still never wear. Them. I mean, I'll wear one for like a week after that happens because I'm like, I'm getting right. I mean, we know a friend that lost, got, got, uh, need in the balls, I believe, mm. and had to get one of his testicles removed from training jujitsu. But you don't wear a cup. I tell people, and about, also, like, you're not allowed to in some tournament or in most tournaments. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I tell people about that all the time because I just. I, I've been doing jiu-jitsu for almost 10 years whenever that happened. And I just remember thinking, like, I didn't know that was a risk. Like, I didn't think that that was a normal thing that could happen. No. and, and I was unaware. <laughs> and then we found out recently. That's something I need to worry about, though. Then then we found out later on that that guy's dad actually lost a testicle in a freak accident as well. So it's like. Yeah, I forgot what happened. It's, but It's like one in a million thing, if you like. Yeah. Weak testicles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I kid, I kid. <laughs> these are the things about the the jujitsu lifestyle that people won't tell you about <laughs> losing testicles getting teeth knocked out yeah uh busted lips um but realistically that's kind of what we want to uh get into a little bit today is like the the quote-unquote the jujitsu lifestyle yeah because i think that there's like you know it like um i don't know it's altruistic the the like term out or word I want to use like meaning of it or definition where it's like this very like um you know you take what you learn on the mats and you use it in your life and that's the lifestyle is jujitsu teaches you how to be a person on and off the mats and that kind of stuff right yeah it's like, like this, that's kind of like a vibe yeah I I th- I, I think that you're a hundred percent on point with the maybe that's like the 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 essence of what it like, yes it's was like meant this to all, be. it's like this all good good for itself like everybody enjoy the jujitsu lifestyle it's like as, mm-hmm. as if it's this um as if it's like written down someplace yeah. as if there's like a code like a jujitsu lifestyle code mm-hmm. or something like that and um i don't know i I feel like it's almost like that jujitsu lifestyle is almost like that meme where it's like my friends think I'm like this or my girlfriend thinks I'm like that and mom and dad think I'm like this, but I'm actually like that. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Where it's like there's all these just different versions of the jujitsu lifestyle. And I think part of it is just like what people think it is. And I think you kind of you're like really nailing the nail on the head where it's like this very like. It's almost, you know, something. And I think that this kind of bothers me to to a an extent is where like a lot of people have like preached the jujitsu lifestyle as it as if it is a religion uh and that's something that is just like no like i get it like there's a, there's so many great things about jujitsu and like it really can benefit you in more ways than just you know learning how to defend yourself on the mat or whatever else or like you know um but Let's not like pretend like get all culty with it. 
You know? Yeah, and I think it, you know, that ha- the hashtag hashtag jujitsu lifestyle, like which that go- I've used a million times. Me too. It's a good one. <laughs> um, but it goes alongside with uh, the jujitsu saved me, and I think uh, I agree yeah, with I agree yeah. with you in that, like, it becomes this religion, and um, I think a lot of people uh, sort of um, imagine this like kind of paradise version, or like this like uh, like. Pleasantville version of a of the jujitsu life so that doesn't actually exist where it's like mm-hmm. I don't know show like you wear flip flops every day and then you surf in the mornings and then you train jujitsu and then everybody's and everybody's then you can friends work out and, and you ju- train jujitsu some more and that's all you do and don't it's worry like- somebody else will pay your bills <laughs> 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 but maybe and that's th- I think that that's a big piece of it is I think that there's this like yeah I- ideal like um version of the jujitsu lifestyle that doesn't necessarily really exist but i think and, and i think that's where like uh you know it's where com- competitors think mm. that's how that like the, the young and up and up, up and coming competitors or people that just have a dream of just like i want to just live the jujitsu lifestyle and compete all the time and like that's all i do is jujitsu and um, I think people have like a wrong idea of what that is because uh, for most people, you still need to have a job to be able to do those things to afford the lifestyle. Well, 99%. You, you just is not cheap. You just is expensive. Not. So, so unless you're, you have like a gym sponsoring you uh, to train there and like other people sponsoring you to just like live and be a person and like you know, you have a free place to stay, but you know, you find out like a lot of these people who are living the quote unquote lifestyle are sleeping on somebody's couch or maybe floor or at the academy. And like, there's, it's not as um, luxurious as you might yeah, assume. It's not for me. I'm a very bougie girl. Like I like to have things, you know, I'm not cheap. No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm no. high maintenance. If you want to know the most I'm expensive, high maintenance. if you want to know the most expensive thing at a place that you would go to, just ask Jenna which one she likes. That's the most expensive one. It's true. <laughs> I do have that gift. <laughs> it's a gift. <laughs> it's a gift that keeps giving. And and I think you're right. Like uh, there's this kind of, you know, this perception that, um, you know, like, and I actually talk about this, you know, a lot of times with people. The, the idea that like just kind of couch surfing and you mm-hmm. know training jiu-jitsu all day like it sounds good at first but like that's not usually satisfying for for anyone for a long period of time there's nobody that's like happy doing that forever right yeah yeah i mean i think there's a, like a lot of people like in any career right where you're you're um you start out you know not making very much you're barely getting by you're doing this but like you're figuring out something how to do what you love but I don't think that the the end goal is just to like continue to just get by in life outside of your career. You know, the the idea is that you're going to advance yourself in the career and make enough money to, you know, afford to travel and like have yeah. fun or whatever. And with like the jujitsu lifestyle, it's like, well, if I'm going to do this, like the advancement is belts and like titles and things like Maybe that. Maybe if right? you're a competitor. But yeah, think- like I'm saying, if you're a competitor... But I think the jujitsu lifestyle extends so far beyond competition in a lot of true, ways. True. And I think when people start, especially if you start when you're younger, you you kind of have this idea of like maybe that's what it takes to be good. And I yeah. you I think you nailed it that it's not just with jujitsu this this occurs. I think in all phases of life, you know, uh, I think you know in my professional life I work in marketing, and in marketing you see it all the time. Kids out of school will say like, I just want to work at an agency, which I hate marketing agencies, but either way they'll say, I want to work at a big agency or something like that. And what will happen is you'll have uh, people that will work for free, work for internships or get these like low level jobs at an agency just to break through. And then you realize you work like a dog. You do all the hard work. All the people that are, you know, above you are getting paid a lot more and they're not doing any of the hard work. And then you're like, well, wait a minute. But you kind of have to like earn your spot. Yeah. You know, that's you, like part of it. But I don't think that people understand the that part of like the lifestyle Well, I, in I, a lot of aspects. But I just don't think you get, you're just not ultimately satisfied with just like, I just want to just train jujitsu and just sleep on a couch. Well, at some point you like, you like to upgrade to a bed. Yeah, because your back and your neck are going to hurt from training all the time. And that goes to another part of the jujitsu <laughs> lifestyle. And I think that that's a part that like, um, you know, I think there's these, these parts that are true. And then I think there's the parts that are not true. And 
Do you know any people that have been doing jujitsu for a long period of time that their lifestyle doesn't include treating or dealing with injuries? Just some kind of like physical therapy or just managing injuries? No, it's that's part of it. It's uh, your hands are going to hurt every day when you wake up. It's just inevitable. Your fingers are going to suck. Um, I feel like mine are getting worse and worse uh, by the second. His hands are gross. Ew. Ew. Or one of these. And I think what's funny is like your your fingers like randomly got worse out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, you can't even make a fist close. No, your fist. I mean like this is my fist. If you're like, that's weird. Why doesn't he just turn that one finger in so that it's a full fist? It's because I can't. It's like a hook like that. Mm-hmm. At least it's not crooked like a lot of football players where there's like. I mean, you it's, see their hands it's and it's sw- like like sideways. <laughs> the swelling's getting so bad. It's gonna be sideways anyways. The, uh, uh, the the thing is, is like, you know, that is a You're going to want insurance, too, at some point. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. So, you know, if you're going to live the jiu-jitsu lifestyle, you want to be able to afford things like insurance because <laughs> it's not going to be good when you have, um, you know, a broken bone, which is usually not broken bones. It's ligaments, right? And those require surgery if they really are bad. Yeah, I don't see a ton of broken bones in, in jiu-jitsu. No. Um, most of the time they are freak accidents, but that, yeah. I mean, that brings up a point rather than just this being a PSA about <laughs> like, uh, you know, all the reasons why you should, you know, be a good human and have insurance and, you know, pay for your own lifestyle. But I think that one of the things about ju- the jujitsu lifestyle that doesn't get talked about a lot is sustainability. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, when you first start out and you're young and you're excited about it, you're training as much as you can, like two and three times a day and doing all this other stuff. And then you're just all about the lifestyle and that's it. But as you get older or just you put miles on your body, it's not realistic to think that you can keep up that pace for very long. And then, you know, once I guess you're done, like let's say if you are wanting to compete or, you know, what's the end game there? It's like, well, then maybe – opening an academy right i i I mean if you we can talk about the career arc of jujitsu being a part of the lifestyle Mm -hmm. in of itself too and i think that that's a that's a dangerous game of it as well which is the jujitsu lifestyle means that jujitsu is is the most important thing in your life but i you know you mentioned like young and wanting to train every day i i mean i would say just young in jujitsu because i've seen people like get like super and excited and engaged in jiu-jitsu when they're older like you know in their 40s 50s whatever i mean you can start jiu-jitsu at any age but it's that sustainability where it's like you know depending on how many miles you you come in jiu-jitsu with even if you have a fresh young body you know i've always joke around that it's like sometimes you'll see a blue belt and they're training jiu-jitsu like somebody's gonna tell them they can't one day and it's like that person they might not be there forever and yeah when you see that behavior well, it's something that we talked about with like you know even blue belts like their careers are ending or people falling off it's like a lot of it is injury it's like you get hurt so bad and there's a lot of people that i know that are really like you know kind of like legends in the sport that can't really train anymore because of injuries due to just overtraining like or i ego. guarantee you know yeah ego ego gets in the way and that that hurts a lot but I think I think I guarantee you could probably if somebody's been training jujitsu for let's say 10 years let's say any pretty much any black belt that's been training long enough you could probably get an MRI on their spine and there's you I would doubt that every single disc in vertebrae is good and there's gonna be something wrong to talk to you this isn't to highlight all the (laughs) negative things about jujitsu no but you should just know you should just know but that's the (laughs) thing is like that's the point of sustainability and i think that that's if i look at the people that i've that i can say like man they have like a really good they have a really good journey in jujitsu whether there's like they've been training jujitsu for a really long time they have a really good level of knowledge and then whatever their goals were i feel like they've achieved them they have a lot of balance like both in their life and with jujitsu yes because i mean to be honest if you're going to do jujitsu for a long time you're going to be good you're going to build that knowledge you can't be somebody that's like having to take long breaks throughout like on purpose meaning an injury or you just like lose interest or whatever yeah i think that that's probably um probably really the point of what we wanted to make is like that there needs to be balance and i think everybody gets excited about oh the lifestyle i need to do this and it needs to be 
jujitsu all the time, but <laughs> all the time. <laughs> but you're gonna burn out, and you know we all get there, and we all burn out, and but it is an addiction where you know jujitsu is very very addicting um, because it is. It's kind of like a like, drug. I'm addicted to training. I'm addicted to sweating. I'm addicted to like you know just being on the mat. We're already and talking about how it makes your teeth fall out, kind of like how meth does. Mm. Yeah. 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 And then it's you'll expensive. get like you'll get scratches and stuff all over your face, kind of like how if you start scratching your skin if you're on meth, people yep. pick up their skin a lot. I don't yep. know. You you run out all your money sleeping on people's couches. Mm. Jujitsu is the same as meth. It's almost the same as meth. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. You'll lose uh, weight. I mean, uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Some okay. people don't. <laughs> Some people don't. It's true. That's true. But I think uh, the, the you do need the balance. And I think that's really with anything in life, right? I think uh, yeah. you need to find balance in all aspects, like whether it's work or, you know, everybody talks about the work-life balance and that kind of stuff. And it's very cliche. But um, I think ultimately, if you don't have that kind of balance with your, your training and everything else, you're not going to be satisfied or happy long term. And there's going to be things that maybe set you back. And you see it happening a lot where people, they start getting burned out and, or they hit plateaus. And then, you know, the lifestyle doesn't seem as as um, glamorous. glamorous as it once was. And then they start getting discouraged. And that's the thing is like, I don't want you to get discouraged. I don't want you to quit. I don't want you like I want you to stay addicted like me because we're all on this drug and we want to keep other people doing drugs with your friends we want to keep fun. you hooked we want so to keep you hooked keep and you keep hooked. coming back yeah that's the thing about something like even meth if you're a dealer what you don't want to do is sell somebody um amount of meth that's going to kill them right you want to sell them just enough to keep them coming back to papa and that's that's the point of this podcast in general is to keep you hooked on meth jiu-jitsu stay on you know sustainable doses <laughs> <laughs> smoke as much jiu-jitsu as you can but no i think you you brought up a really good point and that is you know like uh that balance where it's just like a jiu-jitsu game where it's like if you have a major weakness in your game at some point it's going to get uncovered if mm -hmm. you have this imbalance in the way that you approach your training your lifestyle like you have an unhealthy relationship with jiu-jitsu at some point it's going to manifest itself in a way that's probably going to like it's going to be you're going to crash somehow yeah. that doesn't mean you you can't find a balance eventually but you're going to pay for that in some way yeah i think i think that's like 100 percent true you have to you don't we don't want you to pay for it we want you to enjoy and reap the benefits of jujitsu we don't want you to lose a testicle it. we don't want you to to do that we want you to keep your ligaments intact um it's probably impossible if you're training but <laughs> you know be smart don't have too much ego and maybe those things will stay you know, Ish. one of the things we were talking about is like, you know, I mentioned the meme in the beginning and, you know, what it actually is. We were driving the car the other day. I said, you know what jujitsu actually is, the jujitsu lifestyle? It's laundry. <laughs> and yes. I, yes. And I, think, and I think that that's something that. For me, not for you. That's true. Like you wash your own geese. But I think that, you know, the, you know, you have all this like jujitsu geese like this is that's part of the lifestyle it's like you have to be yeah. able to keep your gi clean you have to over time you accumulate lots of like geese and gear and i don't know you know we have a separate bin at our house of like all old, old jujitsu t-shirts that are meaningful to us that we don't really wear anymore but it's like i don't really want to sh throw away that 2007 arnold classic grappling shirt well, you know it's my first tournament ever yeah okay. so it's like I don't know. We've got a number of those. And I think that that's one of the things that I would say is part of the jiu-jitsu lifestyle where you, you build lots of relationships with people over the years. Yeah. Um, you know, we've traveled all over the world, seen some of the same people in different places. It's it's really cool. That, to me, is a big part of the jiu-jitsu lifestyle. Yeah. And I think that there's like uh, there's so much to gain and benefit from training. Like you, I've seen it change people's like whole demeanor you know just with confidence or you know just realizing when you challenge yourself and put your you get to put yourself in uncomfortable positions every day there's there's got to be something kind of messed up with you if you're not growing as a person you know like it forces you to kind of grow and adapt and i think that most people can learn to use that and translate that into all aspects of their life um except for you know like i said if there maybe there's something wrong with you and you just don't learn from being 
put under pressure. <laughs> well, jujitsu has a lot of things that are really healthy for people, and I, I get why people do say things like jujitsu saved me because yeah, jiu because you you start to work out every day, you start eating healthier because you realize if I'm not like taking care of my body, it's not going to last very long, and so there's a lot of other and then you know. Uh, you're sleeping better because you're like, I got to get rest up enough so that I can, you know, make and, sure. And let's, I, I mean, frankly, jujitsu is really hard to get good at. It takes forever. So you have to be dedicated. So yeah. if you're a type of person that's struggled Forced with. you to commit. Yeah. If yeah. you, if you struggled with committing to something or learning something or sticking with something and you can stick with jujitsu, like, I mean, it's, it's pretty beneficial because that yeah. there's a lot of lessons for you in life that way. And I think jujitsu has a lot of built in rewards, uh, mm -hmm. that, that are good for you. So like, you know, there's a lot of things that are really hard to stick with that are very unrewarding, but you know, we've talked about this, I think on one of our previous podcasts, but how satisfying it satisfying is it to submit somebody the very first time or just, yeah, I mean, or ever just yeah. every, I still pretty you know, excited about every time I get one. And it's really satisfying to put your husband unconscious when you're training with him. Yeah. I wish I could tell you that uh, <laughs> I knew how that felt, <laughs> but you do. Well, well, I've never put a husband to sleep, but no. I've been put to sleep by my Maybe wife. Maybe somebody's husband. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but no. either way, getting put asleep by your wife in the garage is definitely like, I would say that's part of my jujitsu lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend it's it fun. as part of yours. Like, avoid that if you can. No, you don't want that. And honestly, it's not something that I'm striving to do or want to do because I'm like... <laughs> Come on, man. Let's just train. We got to take all this time off to wake you she back up. She gets mad when she puts me unconscious. <laughs> She's like, uh, uh, he's unconscious. You uh, we're acting like it happened all, it happens maybe you all could the time. Train it a little bit harder. Give me more resistance. <laughs> it doesn't happen all the time. Like, let's not be like, get it twisted. But yeah, I think, you know, in general, when you talk about like the jujitsu lifestyle, like what it, what it actually is, I think it's got a lot of these really good qualities, but a lot of it comes away, you know, looking a lot like community and self-development. And I yeah. think, I think those are the things that I would say are big components of the jujitsu lifestyle. It's not flip flops. And you mentioned eating. Um, if there's one food that's associated with the jujitsu lifestyle, what would you say it is? I mean, acai, of course, oh, of course, right? Of course. And I feel like it's a great example of the other things that I think are idolized in jiu-jitsu where it's like too much of a good thing in some cases. Like yeah, I mean, well, and let's not like there's a lot of options where you can eat acai and it can be healthy. But let's not act like the, most of the acai, like if you go to uh, a tournament and they're they're serving up bowls. It's ice cream, people, or a sorbet. It's a sorbet. It's very, very full of sugar, so it's not like the healthiest thing. But if you just trained a whole bunch and sweat and burn a lot of calories and you eat it right after then, like, no harm, no foul. It's delicious. But it's, uh, you know, we I think one of our very first podcasts, we were talking about, like, the different people at tournaments, or maybe it was different people in jiu-jitsu, but we, we mentioned the person that, like, has a acai for the first time. They can't shut up about it. Mm -hmm. I'm a... Uh, but yeah, every pan or world tournament where they have acai for sale, there's somebody that is eating it like eight times a day. They're like, hey, everybody, you guys check this stuff out. It's amazing. It's really good for you. And like how many calories is that? Well, it's a lot of sugar. Yes. And again, like you said, and it's fiber. sorbet. Yeah, it's sorbet. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of fiber. There's a lesson in that too, a lesson about balance. If you're going to get acai, acai and make it at home, I recommend you get the unsweetened like packets of the frozen stuff to make it because you can use bananas to sweeten and then you can have some balance. And how many, <laughs> and I would say like, I would give somebody like an acai recipe right now, but I feel like, uh, there's like 5,000. I feel like no, more. everybody's like, ah, but that's not the real acai. You'll never have the real acai. That's part of the jiu-jitsu lifestyle. Somebody, Unless you're in Brazil. Unless you're in Brazil. Yeah. That's the only way you can have the real acai is in Brazil. Otherwise, everybody will be telling you constantly that that's not the real. But it's not the like, like real acai. This isn't how we have it in Brazil. And you're like, but huh? it, they flew it here. And they're like, ah, yeah, but we don't have airplanes in Brazil. Yeah, but they put like, um, they put a lot of different sugars in it. Yeah, lots of sugars. Yep, lots of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Which no. I think that that's like one of the things that like uh, I think probably I would say gets the I would say bad um, 
bad label in in when you start thinking about the jujitsu uh lifestyle it was like all the things that are sort of like uh material or surface where it's like the things that you eat or you know like uh how much time you spend training or you know all that kind of stuff i think um or do you have a sponsor like mm-hmm. you know all that kind of stuff and r- realistically that stuff is so unimportant in jiu-jitsu like um like we have we've said it before like i know you tell people all the time but like sponsors in jiu-jitsu what well they just when do you get them when you've accomplished something when you can have like you can provide value to the the person who is sponsoring you it's like you have to prove your worth so you're gonna spend a lot of time before that um and just because you're a white belt who uh won a naga tournament doesn't mean you're gonna get sponsorship and and how many bills are we paying with sponsorship money yeah not any (laughs) none and unless you're Gordon Ryan, or- I mean, th- yeah, there's there's there are the very select few, but like think about how many competitors there are, like how many competitors sign up for the worlds, and that is something. It's like not there's not there's only so many brands and so many people who can sponsor you for that, right? Especially like geese and and jujitsu specific brands. So it's like there's very few people like they need to make money. They have, they have to sell things to make money. So it's like, they're not, they're not sponsoring and paying, you know, salaries to all of the athletes. And I think, you know, the flip side of that is more people in jiu-jitsu are probably on the other side where it's like in jiu-jitsu, you know, and this comes a little bit into our last podcast where we talked about black belt entitlement and things like that. But I I think realistically in jiu-jitsu, part of being a part of a community is being asked to support things a lot of times. And that's a good thing. Like mm-hmm. there's so many different things that you and I have supported and that really good causes that just yeah. have been able to be involved with, but you're always going to have young people coming up or just, I don't know, sometimes they're not even young where they're just like, you know, want some cash for tournaments or they want this or that, or they want the gym to support them, which in some cases, you know, like it makes some sense or, you know, there's but always, you, you have to realize that, they, that nothing is just given for, for free like there there's a give and take to all of those relationships there's they have to be mutually beneficial for it to make sense for either party i think that's what people don't understand it's like no like i train really hard and like i think i should be able to train at your gym for free and that you should just you know and these people should just give me these things for free because you know i compete but i think you know if you're somebody that's just an average jujitsu like practitioner or something like that, like, you know, you're going to get hit up at some point by people at your gym or just people online or people that you're Mm -hmm. connected to. They're going to want you to support them or support this or that. And there's a lot of really good charities in jiu-jitsu. You know, we had had a chance to train with Hamala Bahal here recently, and he talked about his, uh, what was the foundation? Everyday Pohada. Everyday Pohada, that's right. Yeah. Which is really great. And there's a, a, a lot of other good organizations in Geese, to uh, underprivileged areas, whether it's in Brazil or other parts of the world. And those are really great. And I think those are worthy of time and attention if you can give it. But, you know, there are times to support each other in Jiu-Jitsu too. Um, We've had people, family members affected by uh, terrible um, diseases and disorders and Jiu-Jitsu communities have supported that. And I know Mm -hmm. that that's the case for a lot of people. But there's just as many non-worthy causes. And I think that that's part of the jujitsu lifestyle too, Uh, which is... The GoFundMes? The GoFundMes. Like, you create a GoFundMe just to get to a tournament and you want people to pay your way? Like... I don't know, especially. But, but they might, but they're they're ranked at Master Three Blue Belt. Mm. It, I think this one <laughs> bothers me because it's like there's so many things out there that are worthy of a GoFundMe and or um, campaign, and for you to do that, it's just like well, why why should your friends and family members just give you money so that you can go chase some dream or or hobby or like just so that you can do like. Take a vacation. That's one thing that bothers me too is like I've seen a lot of people think, especially coming from the Midwest, you know, that uh, I'm going to go do the pans or I'm going to go do this because uh, it's going to be like a vacation. We get to go to California and have some fun. Jiu-jitsu lifestyle. Jiu-jitsu lifestyle, you know. It's like, no, man, like realize I've been to a lot of different places and there's 
and if I'm competing, it's rare that I get to really enjoy the city and the views. And like, it's not a vacation. You're going to compete and it's, you're doing your job in a lot of cases. And even as, as coaches, I feel even worse for coaches because at least they, you know, are they like as a competitor, I'm like, well, I can be selfish because I'm competing on this day. So I get to look out for me and I can rest or I can do this or do what I need to do. But if you're a coach going and you're supporting your team, it's like you're stuck in a gymnasium. Yeah, and you, get you don't a- get to see the sights. You don't get to do this. And so for for people that have that attitude, it's like I just want to go out. to I'm going to compete in the pans just because I just want to take a vacation and go to California or it's Vegas. Like, from yeah, or wherever. Or- yeah, like all of them, you know, it's like, yes, do we have a good time? And is there a time for that for? sure but um but it you should be focused on the goal i guess and then but don't but don't set up a gofundme so that your friends can fund your vacation (laughs) and i think that's a telltale (laughs) sign of uh, you know we talked about competitors versus non-competitors what really makes somebody competitors that yeah. You know, that, that drive. And I think, you know, that that is one thing. I get salty. Sorry, guys. The, the flip side of that, though, is that, you know, uh, our first instructor always said, you know, if you travel someplace, bring a gi with you. Yeah. And um, that, that's been such a, like, even whenever we have traveled for competition and things like that, you know, a lot of places we've gone, we've only gone for jiu-jitsu. And while you don't get to see the normal sights and sounds and mm-hmm. things like that, you get these really unique, fun experiences because yeah. you get to see a part of wherever you're going. Like we went to Hawaii earlier this year mm-hmm. and just the the welcoming of the people there and yeah. like, you know, um, people that were on the same team that were supporting you competing. For sure. It was amazing. And, um, you know, that would have been experience. We w- That was a different side of Hawaii that we got to see versus the one we probably would have seen on vacation or something right yeah i think it's that's really true and um you know guys if you want me to come you know teach in hawaii i'm always down so just hit us up we're good i'd love to go back to hawaii after all this uh virus is over because i don't want to have to quarantine myself for 14 days there and i think you know that's it comes back to the community thing and, you know, the unique experiences that you get from traveling. But, you know, if you want to live the jiu-jitsu lifestyle, it's yeah. really find something that's sustainable and balance and build relationships. You know, go to seminars, go to tournaments. You know, I, I'm i probably hard on seminars sometimes where I'm like, oh, you know, like most of the time, are they really worth the money, blah, blah, blah. But I think about all the relationships that I've built and realistically a lot of stuff that I have learned at seminars, it's more than just, you know, trying to, you know, download a few techniques that you can use on the mats, you know, the relationships that you build in jujitsu, like that really does open up, you know, your life to a lot of really new experiences. You can't get other places. And it's not even just, I think it's not even just the experiences. It's almost like, uh, it just opens you up to different opportunities, I guess, even still, because you just meet so many, and we've talked about this, like you meet so many interesting people from different walks of life that you wouldn't. And so maybe you ha- you find an opportunity to do something else um, because the community is like pretty tight knit, I would say. And um, you do get, you know, an- another f- family, like a, a new yeah. set of family, which is really cool. There's, I think, I don't know that there's a lot out there that provides you with that level of real like community i mean like globally (laughs) sorry cash is one to play but realistically you know there's a lot of different things you can get involved with that provide community but jujitsu is has a lot of really unique experiences like you said Mm -hmm. and i think that uh that's one of the things you can take away from it and like you said the there's a different a lot of different walks of life so like the jujitsu lifestyle to say it's like this one thing or like it's this like ideological like way of life like it's crazy because it's like i know people that are doctors i know people that are criminals i know people that are cops um not not professional criminals although i mean you could argue it on a handful of people that's the thing is you're gonna meet some sketchy people too but that's part of the lifestyle people aren't black and white you learn that like this person's mostly a bad guy but they have some good qualities they also have you know they're good with dogs or something uh yeah well <laughs> that's that's like kind of a funny thing that you always say is like you you always talk about like oh i can never be a politician because of the people that i'm associated with through jujitsu there's too many it's pictures of me with a gi on with my arms around you know a handful of other people and one of those other people i mean yeah murderer i mean we i mean maybe that's like but i mean think about all the pictures we've taken jujitsu you think there's a chance we've not been in the room with a murderer 
I feel like this is taking a really dark, dark turn. turn. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> and now I feel like people are going to evaluate all the pictures we're in. And anyways, don't do that. Guess, guess don't. who's the murderer? <laughs> yeah, who's the murderer? We don't know. <laughs> It'd be funny if you grab the pictures and you're just like, guess who's a murderer? And they just put their p- picture up and you're like, I bet this one. And it's like, oh, that's, that's Dave Harbison. No. <laughs> Just a pony puncher. Just a pony puncher. <laughs> Fun story. Trained with this guy, Dave Harbison. Long story short, at one point, he punched a pony in the face. Yep. I forget. Terrible forget. human. I love horses, so that's really... I don't remember the pretext. Com- can't so believe we were actually Draw friends. your own conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> like, without context. <laughs> He's a terrible person. Um, <sighs> but that's... I don't know. That To me, the jujitsu lifestyle is this... I think, it is what, I think it is what you want it to be, right? So you don't have to be like... A, like um, feel guilty because I'm not training enough. I'm yeah. not doing this enough. I'm not... You know, I, I can't be the jujitsu lifestyle. I'm not like, into jujitsu the way I should be. I'm not living the lifestyle. No. Enjoy jujitsu. Take from it what you can. And, you know, spread that to other aspects of your life. Um, grow as a person. Do be- lots of laundry. Yeah, and yo, know, you'll get really good at laundry, and then um, unless you're dirty, and then this is also kind of like a PSA um, for the current times. And I know this is a very, very um, oh, do it, drop touchy, it on them. Touchy subject. This give is the very controversial. The but given the circumstances that we're in, okay, right now I'm getting bit by my dog. Um, he's very nippy. Uh, <laughs> but right now we're going through the 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 coronavirus pandemic and things are starting to get back. There's a lot of the things that we're starting to get back to training um, slowly but surely and we are going to. And so think about this. We're doing all these things to um, keep everything clean, to sanitize. We're washing our hands. Reduce we're washing exposure this. to germs like you and don't viruses. Wanna expose things or just contaminate things. So, wash your belts, okay? I think it's disgusting that people don't wash their belts. That thing gets tighter on your waist with the sweatiness. People are grabbing it all the time. There's like other people's body fluids inside of your belt. And I get, it's not, you're not going to lose your jujitsu skills. I get the superstition. I don't know. I understand that. But you're not going to. You're let me just ask, dirty. Let me, ask, let me ask, are you a doctor? I'm not a doctor. Then you don't know about the <laughs> magic skills in a belt. But either I way. I don't need to be a doctor to know about magic. Okay? <laughs> but I, th- I think, yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point And not to, to like divert the episode. But, yeah, it makes total sense. If this classes are going to be small and you're going to take people's temperatures, all this good stuff. Yeah, like don't show up with a dirty belt. like Or a dirty gi. Like we don't. Well, I feel dirty like gi is a given. That goes without saying. But like the whole belt Part thing, of the jiu-jitsu like, lifestyle is doing laundry. Remember, that's like one thing that we agreed on. Yes. So do the laundry. Do your laundry. And that includes washing your belt. And you might be like, Jenna, you wash your belt every time you train? No, I don't wash my belt. But I do have like a rotation no, of belts. But now we but do. I have been since, yeah, since things have been dirty. But we. But the we, world's contaminated we're with, not secret with the training, virus. Though. But um, I mean, we've been training with each other. Everybody yeah. knows that. Even with you and I, I can't trust your germs. No, you can't. You can't. No. No. I didn't even shake hands with him. It's true. I don't know that we've ever shaken hands. If we have, it's been... No, we haven't. It's been super awkward. You've done it like to me just to make me feel weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would do that. Because he's really good at being weird. Oh, guys, I'm so good. Weird and creepy is like your specialty. Ew, stop. Okay, don't I'll stop. It. I'll stop. Mm, maybe a whole episode one time. No. Once we get to... Nope, just no. <laughs> I'm just shutting it down. Okay, we're going to shut it down because you'll you'll get too weird. Anyway, wash your belts, guys. Be clean. Stay safe. Um, stay balanced. And stay balanced. And that's that's the jiu-jitsu lifestyle. Clean, safe, and balanced. Yeah. S- and injured. <laughs> injured. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We hope to catch you next time on... Not Fighting. <laughs>